Welcome to the Stadium Theater Performing Arts Center and Conservatory. Nestled in the heart of Woonsocket, Rhode Island, the Stadium Theater has been a beacon of culture and entertainment for 100 years. During this time, millions have experienced the power of the performing arts here at the Stadium Theater, even though it is a magical place today for all those who participate. It has endured the trials of time. In 1926, a local industrialist, Arthur Darman, invested $1 million to build the stadium theater and the adjacent stadium office building in downtown Woonsocket. Darman knew the old wooden boarding house that would be adjacent to his theater had to go. He raised it and erected the concrete and steel stadium building. He rented two proprietors, fine clothing shops on the first level, while the upper floors housed tenants, such as doctors, dentists, lawyers, insurance agents, and realtors. Once completed, he staged a grand spectacle with searchlights and had a military band play in the square. In its early years, the stadium hosted three shows a day, seven days a week, featuring a 12-piece orchestra and the Wurlitzer organ, which is still in working condition today. The grand hall and lobby's decoration is eclectic, and the wall design is Adams-esque relief. The auditorium is arranged on a stadium plan, and it is the source of its name, the Stadium Theater, with the balcony extending from the ground floor to the rear ceiling. Darman proudly noted his theater's capabilities to present the brightest stars of the day. He said, if there is anything in the world that is good in theater and when Socket wants it, we can get it. His steadfast efforts continued into the early 1950s. The stadium was one of the last places where vaudeville still appeared. In 2002, the stadium theater was placed on a national registry of historical places. The city of Woonsocket and its vital textile industry suffered decades of decline, having a widespread and devastating impact on the region. The escalating cost of quality live entertainment and the advent of movie multiplexes also led to the theater's decline. It reached its lowest point when it was leased to a Boston group that showed X-rated films. By the 1990s, the stadium was delinquent in its taxes by $250,000 and slated to face the wrecking ball. In 1991, even as the theater was a boarded up relic facing impending doom, a small group of citizens could still envision the stadium's beauty through the years of decay and graffiti. This volunteer group, led by the former Woonsocket mayor, Francis Langto, came together to form the Save Our Stadium Committee. On a rainy day, the SOS committee held a radiothon under the dimly lit marquee. They hoped to raise their first $1,380, the WNRI radio call numbers, towards the restoration, but were completely unprepared for the generous outpouring of the community. Within 24 hours, individuals from all over the region had come to the theater and collectively donated over $25,000. The stadium rebirth had begun. Without a single paid staff person, the numerous volunteers worked countless hours cleaning, fundraising, and operating the theater. All while hosting concerts and performing during the restoration. As years passed, the movement rapidly gained popularity and attracted the attention of some of the most successful and influential artists. These individuals included the Farley Brothers, movie producers, who hosted the world premiere of their film There's Something About Mary and Stuck On You at the Stadium Theater, Hollywood stars that included Cher, Ben Stiller and his family, and Woody Harrelson were in attendance. 
In 2001, the Stadium Theatre Foundation completely restored the Grand Hall, as well as the elaborate lobby, to its magnificent historical structure. Despite the claims made by a consulting firm and the local newspaper, the One Socket Call, and numerous individuals in the community, that this mammoth project was too comprehensive for this all-volunteer group to succeed, not a single volunteer believed for one second that it wouldn't work. In 2004, the theater was restored, but still struggling with expenses. The board of directors hired Kathy Levake. Over the next 20 years, the stadium theater grew exponentially under her leadership. As executive director and CEO, she and her team increased programming in the audience space, acquired and renovated the adjacent office building, increased the volunteer base and the professional staff, all while focusing on debt reduction. Since the theater's restoration, international celebrities such as Liza Minnelli, Charlie Daniels, Winona Judd, Howie Mandel, and Chuck Mangione graced the stadium stage. A key element in the programming philosophy is recognizing the importance of sharing this world-class venue with local artists. Since the start of the resurgence 30 years ago, Theatrical productions were produced in-house and presented on the grand stage. In addition to presenting high-caliber, affordable entertainment, the Stadium Theater also offers a broad spectrum of educational programming designed to offer children and young adults an opportunity to develop an appreciation for the arts. With the plethora of events, the Stadium finds itself bustling with activity almost every day of the year. A fortunate byproduct of this consistent programming is the draw of the people from outside the region into Woonsocket. As a result, local business experience a rise in traffic throughout the year. Over the last season, the Stadium Theatre engaged over 120,000 patrons from all over Southern New England. It is one of the largest performing arts organizations in the region, and it is a pivotal anchor to the revitalization of Woonsocket's downtown district. In 2009, the Stadium Theatre expanded its ownership of the surrounding properties by purchasing the Arcade Main Street entrance and the Alley entrance, additional office spaces, and the second floor space above the Arcade. In 2013, the renovated second floor space was unveiled as the Marquee Room. This new performance space was completely designed and furnished through the donations of generous individuals, business owners, and foundations. The stunning space features a donated Baby Grand Steinway & Sons piano and a full kitchen, all surrounded by granite and custom millwork. Attendance to the shows continued to grow to the point where it was imperative to build a permanent pub and beer cooler for thirsty patrons. The new pub aided in better logistics moving guests along quickly to obtain their beverages. This, however, created yet another issue, moving guests in and out of the restrooms at a quicker pace. It was now imperative to build an addition to increase the ladies' room from three stalls to 11. In January of 2014, the foundation purchased the adjacent five-floor, 30,000-square-foot stadium building to support our theatrical productions and administrative staff. Our volunteer demo crew, who has not only demoed walls, but also moved costumes, props, and set pieces not once, not twice, but numerous times. These volunteers saved the theater thousands. The project wouldn't have accomplished what was achieved without them. The exterior facade front went from neighborhood blight and decay to vibrancy and revitalization. The alley was dreary, unappealing, and scary at times. It is now clean and inviting with the new staircase and new ambient lighting. 
The first floor of the conservatory is where we build and store our sets and large props. We now have heat in the winter and AC in the summertime, an upgrade that our set builders and scenic painters greatly appreciate. When the building was purchased, all the hallways were decaying and unnerving, and all the halls have been restored with rich, warm tones, observing the beauty of the original mahogany doors and imported Holland tiles. The second floor is now fitted with five stunning rehearsal spaces, including a clean and contemporary green room for our artists who perform in the marquee room. The restrooms on all floors have been transformed. They have been designed to mirror the grand hall restrooms. The third floor is our costume shop floor, all neatly organized with barcodes for quick check-in and check-out. It has a bright and airy sewing room. and a separate waiting room and dressing room space for the artists. Professional office space is located on the fourth floor with a boardroom, lunchroom, and a photography studio for the theatrical marketing promotions. The lower level is where the new modern dressing rooms are located. It is connected to the theater by an underground corridor under the alley. These spaces now have showers and restrooms as well as a laundry area and full kitchen. There is enough space to hold 100 performers with air conditioning for all. The newest part is renovating the old dressing rooms located under the stage. This space is now home to our new green room. Our board members, house staff, security, box office team, pub, concessions, costume, set and behind the scenes crew, hospitality, tech crew. All of our actors are volunteer. They are the reason the stadium is able to offer this incredible playground for artists and offer family affordable entertainment and educational programs. Today, almost 100 years later, the Stadium Theater and Conservatory is a vibrant campus offering high caliber entertainment and education for the region. It has played an integral part of the community's cultural, economic, and educational development. It has been a hub for entertainment, theater education, community ceremonies, and celebrations. Those who have passion in their lives are blessed with positive mental health, happiness, and an optimistic outlook about life. We all know that success follows individuals who embrace these qualities. And the Stadium Theater is a place where these blessings flow. We thank you if you have played a part in our past we thank you for those who are participating in our programming today. And for those who have yet to partake, we welcome you to be a part of our vibrant future.